And as long as I have life, I'm going to be thankful. I may have been burned out of my home, but I'm still here. I'm, I'm thankful. I may have punched out in every test this week, but I'm still here. And I'm thankful. Part of the reason we worship, quite frankly, is to protect us from being so self-centered. Around the world, Adventist education serves as a platform of opportunity for thousands of students. Schools provide quality education to inspire a brighter future. Beyond that, Adventist education shares an even greater hope with its students, a hope in Jesus. In many cases, students have come to know a loving God through caring and thoughtful teachers. Across the North American division, there are more than 1,100 Adventist primary and secondary schools. This territory spans over 12 time zones, from Bermuda in the east to Palau in the west. This gives Adventist schools the opportunity to serve students from various backgrounds and communities. In the southwestern region of the United States, Holbrook Indian School focuses on educating the local indigenous people. This school was established as a mission school for the unreached native groups of the Southwest. 
The majority of students who come to Holbrook are not Adventist and may have never even heard the gospel message. Many come from environments where they face negative influences, and some of these children grow up thinking drugs, alcohol, abuse, and neglect are normal. Their experience at Holbrook gives them a new perspective where they find caring teachers and staff, a place where they can just be kids, and a place where they meet Jesus. Today, Holbrook is teaching students from grades 1 to 12 in practical ways. Their educational program has four pillars, physical health, mental health, spiritual health, and academic achievement. Each component is fundamental to the student's learning experience. In addition to core subjects, they offer classes like native cultural studies, welding, woodworking, auto repair, agriculture, pottery, and horsemanship. I don't want to be stuck on the res because once you're on the res, you stay on the res. And I want to start something new. The one thing my grandpa taught me is that God's there for you. You just keep looking forward, don't look backwards. It just feels amazing because it's silent, it's peaceful. The only thing you can hear is just the birds chirping and the breeze and the leaves. I feel, feel more myself. I mean, I conquered my fears on riding horses and stuff. I mean, I have no reason to be scared of it, a horse because they're just horses. When I run, it just, it feels like home to me. I just like the smell of the trees and, you know, I could just, I like the feeling of the dirt. My brothers, they, uh, they drink and they smoke. Um, I don't like that. So I try to get away from it as possible. I decided I wanted to come to Holbrook. And when I got there, um, I noticed it was different. I noticed the kids there were a lot more different. They weren't so mean or so irritating. The teachers too, they were really different. They didn't seem so mean or they just seemed calm and um, nice. They really helped you with all your stuff, your education. I believe that this school provided more than just 100%. And I like that, it's, it's awesome. Holbrook Indian School continues to give students the chance to create a better future and find hope in Jesus. Please pray for this school and others across the North American Division, and thank you for supporting Mission.
This next selection that we want to do is an anthem of sorts, um, written by Marvin Curtis. It is a celebration song, Celebration Alleluia. So this next piece that we would like to do for you, just a little bit of explaining. Um, I always kid about this. It is in a different language, 
Um, and I know us Adventists, we are so excited about speaking in tongues in church. So I, I always have to preface these particular songs just so you know, no, nobody is roused up too much. Um, but this is uh, taken from Psalm 150, uh, composed by the name of Hermani Aguiar. And he takes and kind of mixes two styles of music. Uh, those of you who've studied music or done music appreciation, music history, um, he takes what's known as Gregorian chants, one of the oldest forms of church music uh, that we still have record of. Um, and he mixes it, he's a Brazilian composer, he mixes it with um, his Latin American roots. Um, and so you'll hear throughout the piece, there's this little motif, which is just a musical idea, um, that, that kind of repeats itself throughout the song. Dun, 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 That's the, the, the entire, uh, just the Brazilian feel to it. And then you'll hear with it, um, there is, Da -da -ba -da 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 -da. That's what's taken from Gregorian chant, all right? So this is Psalm 150. So this next selection, uh, I need your prayers on. No, I'm serious. You're laughing. Um, so this particular piece is one that we've spent just about the entire semester working on, uh, an arrangement by Thomas Cousins. Um, I assure you, you're, you're not, you don't know what you're in store for. Um, but it is a song, a praise song, but it is... I can't, I don't even know how to explain this song. I don't think there's really an explanation. I think it's just that we're gonna sing it. Y'all are gonna pray for us, amen. Y'all are gonna pray for us, amen. amen. And they're, gonna, uh, they're gonna do uh, a phenomenal job. Um, this is Glorious Everlasting by Thomas Cousins. You can tell by the response of the students, they're ready to sing this, yeah? Amen.
So I have to take a moment to do this. Would you all please just appreciate our organist, Mr. Russell Hall. Let me just assure you, what he is doing is no easy feat. Um, and so just the fact that he is here with us and, and just accompanying us, thank you uh, once again, uh, Mr. Paul. All right, so this uh, next particular piece uh, is just a ministry taken from Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew that speaks about um, the, the scripture where, where Jesus says, come to me, all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Um, it's a few people that I wanna make sure that I mentioned for this particular piece. Um, first is our quartet, uh, which is Miss Ayodele Oluyemi. <laughs> and we have our mezzo, uh, Miss Aaliyah Lambert. <laughs> Tenor is Mr. Pax Fordham. <laughs> and our bass baritone, Mr. Spencer Parsons. So I kind of saved the best part for last, and I'm kind of picking on him because he, he, uh, he got out of my grasp last year, but he's not going to do so this year. Our student accompanist, Mr. Warren Brady. Thank you. 
Um, this next piece, an anthem, most of you all are familiar with it. Uh, the Lord is my light. Um, we will, because uh, I want to keep it moving, so we will celebrate the quartet at the, uh, uh, at the culmination, at the end of this particular piece. This is The Lord is my light.
watch, neither forsake me. Our student percussionist, Mr. Joshua Rainwright. Our quartet, starting with our soprano, Grace Williamson.
our mezzo, Nadia Duran. Our tenor, Mr. Aldwin Johnson. And then I feel like I conquered a folk because I got Diallo Banks sitting in the front. Okay, at this time we're gonna give just a moment. Um, we're gonna reposition ourselves. Corral, you're gonna come out front. And switch that around for me, please. So, go ahead and move for me. So these next two particular pieces. Um, so even now, um, some of you all have heard of and you've seen some of you all may even know him personally, um, a man by the name of Mervyn Warren. Um, so back in 1985, he takes and uh, creates, writes his own spiritual. Um, Mervyn Warren, uh, those of you who have followed him musically, has always been ahead of his time. Um, and uh, he puts together this piece back in 1985 um, that you just did not see in choral music. Um, some of the chord changes, some of the rhythms, um, it was just non-existent. Even to this day, this next particular song that we're gonna sing, um, I have to give a hand to the chorale for putting this, that, that they have taken the extra work because this group that you see standing before you uh, they rehearse outside of already what you know, a rigorous schedule for the choir. Um, and so that's what we're going to minister for you. This is I Ain't Got Long to Be Here.
excited about that day when we'll sing and shout the victory. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but um, just when I look at the, the state that the world is in today, I'm ready for Jesus to come. Uh, when, when I consider uh, what is going on in our government, when I consider what is going on in our nation, when I consider what's going on in the world around us, now I'm ready for Jesus to get here. 
Um, and this, this next selection, this next piece, I have to take a moment. Hold on, I have to celebrate her because she's my voice student. Kaylin, would you just raise your hand for me, please? <laughs> in this first half, but I assure you it's, it's going to be a brief intermission. Don't go anywhere. You will miss what the best is yet to come. Um, so we want to close with a scripture that's taken from Revelation. It's a song that it says when we stand on the sea of glass uh, and when we behold the Savior, uh, Words escape us, but it says that this song begins to rise from the redeemed saints. Um, well, let's, we'll just minister to you on, on, on this particular selection. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass that mingled with fire. And them that had victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses.
Ujao watoto. So I have to talk just a little bit about that particular piece. Um, and if you'll allow me to take a serious tone for just a moment. Um, a lot of people asked uh, why that particular piece to perform. Um, and if I could be completely candid with you, I, I want to just uh, kind of be completely honest. Um, in, in a world, in a church, in a denomination where our culture is not celebrated, where our culture is demonized, where our culture is considered other, um, it's been a burning in my heart to celebrate us. Um, I don't 
mean to step on any toes. Well, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Um, but there are there are other styles of music that are so often celebrated in our church, um, and then uh, then other styles are are looked down upon. Um, and I serve a God who created the spangled heavens and when he spoke the worlds into existence um, spoke a man by the name of David who wrote Psalm 150 uh, and in Psalm 150 it speaks about uh, clapping our hands and it speaks about the appropriate idea of dancing uh, to the glory of God Let me be clear about that um, and so, like I said, in a world where we typically uh, are not celebrated, you'll have to forgive me, uh, those of us who may, may feel a little uneasy, um, but you'll have to forgive me, like I said, for too long we do not celebrate ourselves. Um, and so, as it is, is a lively piece and, and a lovely piece, um, it is also an attempt to celebrate a people that God created. Right. So this next particular piece, um, it's kind of got some good old uh, Southern gospel to it. Um, I'm, I'm not even gonna say anything else about it. I'm just gonna let them do what they do. <laughs> Tell you what he's done for me. 
but surely coming to a close. Hope you've been blessed thus far. I wonder if you all would just worship on, on, on this one with us. You know it. Someone says, don't be discouraged. Know that God is not. Come on, sing with us. So don't be. It says joy comes in the morning. Know that God is nigh. Stand still and look up. God is going to show. He's standing by. I want to sing that one more again. Don't be discouraged. Come on, says you got to encourage yourself. Joy comes in. Know that God is nigh. Stand still and look up. God is going to show up. He's standing by. There's healing for, come on, sing. Healing for. There's shelter. Come on, let's sing together, church. Lord, sin. Send it for this we know. To heal. Come on, sing to the Father. Healing for.
there is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Um, we have, uh, as we can see in, in, uh, in today's time, uh, there is but a short time left before God cracks the sky. And I, for one, am looking forward to that day when there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more bills. And I, knew that, I knew that Pine Forge parents would enjoy that one. Um, no, no more, you know, living, uh, just not knowing what kind of crazy world uh, we're living in. Uh, well, in this way, as the time is, is, is well spent, and we want to get you all home. Um, Charles Tindley, uh, a Methodist preacher, a uh, Methodist minister, um, after having lived a life much toil and tribulation, um, he pins the words to a song. Um, and the, the words to this song, I, I, I will echo until the day that Jesus cracked the sky. Um, and, and the words say, I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future holds for me. But this I know, I may not know what the next day holds. I, I may not know what the next week, month, year holds for me. But this I do know, if Jesus leads, Can I just, can I, can I take a quick second to just be real? Because, you know, a whole, uh, uh, a, a whole lot of times we, we paint this Christian walk as, you know, it says, the song says every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. But if we could be real, there are some days that aren't so sweet. There are some days, uh, Listen, Job said it best. He, he kind of was real with it. He said that sometimes it's like God is slaying him. Uh, then, then Jeremiah, the prophet, says, sometimes, God, I feel as if you are taking just slabs of concrete and breaking my teeth with them. This is Jeremiah, the prophet. Uh, but then he says in verse 22, he says, but it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to me. I, like I said, just, just being real, there are some days where I, I talk to God and say, God, if you don't get here soon, I don't know what it's going to be, but this I know. If Jesus leads me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, if Jesus leads me, the Lord is my light and my salvation. If Jesus leads me, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing. If Jesus leads me, there is a bomb in Gilead. If Jesus leads me, I shall. Let me let me go back. Let me let's listen. Doesn't say I might get home. Doesn't say it's a probable chance that I'm gonna get home. It doesn't say that I'm hoping that I'm gonna get home. So if Jesus leads me, 
I shall get home someday. We hold to that hope and we hold to that faith. If Jesus leads me, I shall get home someday.
Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together once more. Come on. It's indeed more than just a ministry. It's young people looking the way they look and a leadership that is committed to excellence. So, so often I'm, I'm, I'm quick to speak and have the fastest words to respond to such a performance, but performance would not be the word to explain exactly what they have just done. It's a ministry of the highest level. It's one that reaches across all lines and all borders. And, and it breaks every thinking. And it allows us to understand that our children are capable of doing just about anything that they put their minds to. And I think while we celebrate the talent and the expansion of such talent, I think it's our responsibility to put our hands together for the leadership of the choir. that I'll only take 30 seconds and I will take 30 seconds but in an era when we are not celebrated as much and when our leadership will take the risk of going on the limb and doing something that we ha are willing to join him as we celebrate not just our heritage but who we are as a people and our willingness to inculcate in the minds of our students that they must be proud of who they are and I say this with no apology. We are on the grounds and we belong to one of the greatest institutions on earth, Pine Forge Academy. And if you have only spent a day, a second, or a minute with us, you'll recognize that the Holy Spirit in this, this place. And with no further ado at this time, I'd like for us to all stand. And before we offer a word of prayer for closing, I'd like to remind the creative arts folks that you need to stay behind. Dean Audion, Pastor Wills would like to meet with you. And somebody will not be able to connect with anybody because I found this in the hallway. So if it's yours, please see me at the end of the program. So uh, some of you all received the email um, that was sent out we are inviting on tomorrow uh, those parents who are alum of the school uh, to, to come on up here and worship and minister with these, your children. Uh, two particular songs we rehearse at 9.30 tomorrow. Uh, oh, for faith and true religion. So um, we hope to have you. Uh, and then if even I know that some have some Sabbath school responsibilities. Even if, if you know the music, just, just get on up here and worship with us. Amen. And even though we're overtaken by the Holy Spirit, I hope that we will be overtaken when it's time for us to drop our kids off on time for curfew. The deans are still empowered to hand out demerit for those who fail to observe the rules and the principles and the codes. So I hope that we'll do just that. And, and um, tomorrow we see you guys bright and early as we continue in the very same vein. At this point, I'd like for you guys to close your eyes as pastor pray for us. Let us pray. Loving Father, our God, again, we are so thankful and so appreciative of the Sabbath. We thank you, Father God, for what has transpired in this here, your sanctuary. We thank you for our young people, Father God, who poured out their offering of sacrifice before thee. And we pray tonight, Father, that all of heaven was rejoicing in and received the gifts of your young people. Thank you so much, Father God, for touching down tonight. Amen. That as when we leave this place, Father God, we will leave here transformed and renewed because of you. Bless us and keep us as we enter into your Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.